So in this segment, we're going to be talking about only 21 foreign nationals removed from the UK under post-Brexit asylum rules. And there's a big, I think, a glaring uh, mistake in this article, despite the fact that it's written by three people. Um, it's kind of embarrassing, really, but this article is important nonetheless, because you've got only 21 foreign nationals that have been removed by the, from the UK under post-Brexit inadmissibility rules on asylum. So effectively, what they said is their uh, asylum claims are not um, admissible, so they've been um, effectively deported to the safe countries that they've been um, smuggled in from, potentially. So since the UK formally left the EU last year, asylum seekers who arrive from a safe third country can be returned. Now, can you spot the mistake? I've got to answer my cat here. He might be right. I'll let you know after I let him out. So the answer is this line here in orange and yellow. Since the UK formally left the EU, asylum seekers who arrive from a safe third country can be returned. It should be can't be returned because... We don't have access to the EU's database anymore, so what that means, or the specific database we need, so what that means is we can't actually prove where these people have come from, which country, which safe third country they have um, come from. Overall, there were 63,089 asylum applications in the 12 months to June, um, the highest in 19 years. The figures coincide with the proposal to fast-track removal of, of Albanian people who cross the channel in small boats. It's quite surprising that there's so many Albanian people who are making this journey. Um, an agreement with the Albanian government is expected to start next week to allow its police to be stationed at Ports in Kent. So you have a situation where I think people may be telling people from Albania Smug people smugglers telling people from Albania that the UK will struggle to deport you and so you can get your asylum claim heard here. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's very odd, but it's obvious that Brexit is playing a role in this, given the fact that we it's hard for us to deport people back to safe third countries um, if their asylum claims are not granted. Since the 1st of January 21, asylum seekers whose claims are deemed inadmissible can be removed under new tougher rules. During that period, more than 17,000 asylum claims claimants were identified for consideration. Of those, almost 16,000 were served with notice of intent, warning of potential removal. But um, of those 16,000, only 83 were subsequently ruled as inadmissible for asylum. So what you do, what you have is a system where essentially 16,000 people, in my opinion, were told, we're going to deport you. And of those 83, it's only possible to deport 83 of them. Um, which shows you how kind of bad the post-Brexit system is now. Um, and they're also, you know, of the 21 people who've so far been returned, you've got Denmark, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden and Switzerland, but none to France. And that's interesting because when you think about it, France is the most likely route for people to come, um, you know, across the English Channel in small boats. So you, it's interesting that none of these people have been deported back to France because without access to the database, you don't know where these people have come from. You know, you can you can guess that they've crossed from France to England, but you can't really prove it. The 2020 figure of 63,089 asylum uh, applications is 77% higher than in 2019 before the start of the pandemic and also higher than the 2016 um, European migration crisis, which saw 36,564 applications. However, it is not as high as the 2002 peak of 84,132 applications. Don't know what was causing that in 2002. Um, if anyone can let, you know, let me know in the comments, but point being is that, um, you know, w during the kind of huge kind of, uh, you know, refugee crisis during kind of the mid 2010s, the UK wasn't hit that badly compared to, you know, Greece and Italy, you know, the Mediterranean countries, they were hit really badly with a lot of people seeking asylum and trying to get out of, um, kind of, I think, uh, kind of the Arab countries and, um, North Africa countries. It was, uh, I think it was after the fall of Libya and also the stuff that kicked off in Syria as well. Um, but you'd have to check on that stuff. Albanian arrivals. So the UK officials believe Albanians could make up to 50 to 60 percent of small boat arrivals, which is, you know, a huge amount of people. Um, given that normally it's people from um, kind of Africa or the Middle East that are typically um, the people who you would assume you'd use the small boat crossings. The proportion of Albanians granted refugee status stands at 53 percent, which is quite low because um, I think the applications for other kind of minorities other people making you know crossing the english channel trying to seek um, refuge in the uk is i think around the 80 plus percent mark the home office said albania is a safe and prosperous country well evidently not if there's so many people trying to seek asylum here for whatever reason i'm not familiar with the albanian government that much or the goings on in albania i have a friend who is albanian um i know his family quite well um they're cool people all of them but that's as far as my knowledge of albania goes really um 
I know they had uh, a lot of problems before, um, you know, years ago, but my knowledge of Albania is very limited, as is my knowledge of most things. But point being is that, you know, because of Brexit, because of the UK's out of the Dublin 3 agreement, um, what it means is it's much harder for us to deport um, asylum seekers, you know, effectively, whether their claims are, uh, what you know, the claims that are rejected, I think it's far harder for us to reject people. And what it means is people have a better chance of having their asylum claims heard here. And it means the UK has to actually look after them. Um, which obviously some Brexiteers aren't going to be too happy about, but you know nothing really makes them happy about kicking, uh, apart from kicking minorities, which it's going to be a lot harder for them to do now. They better buckle up because the road has got a few more bumps ahead. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.